my nerdy Facebook group yesterday, uh, somebody posted kind of something that dealt with both of us. We're doing an A, B today and in B, C. So they said that their athletic director asked the calculus teacher if they knew how to find the area of the outfield grass of their very specific softball field and to know how much grass seed to order for the field field it ended up being not just regular geometry i needed to integrate to get the area between two curves but they were two polar curves based on the nature of how the softball field was laid out so we're doing polar in here and we just started integration just today in calc one we just did our very first remember when we started we'd do like the left and right rectangles before we even kind of knew so that's where they started so they're at the very end of it beginning, you're at the very end of it, and this problem, I thought that was going to go, it was posted on the very day. Anyway, so today what we're going to do is learn how to graph, which actually, I'll be honest with you, on the AP exam, if the graph isn't given to you, it's calculator active, and you'll be able to go make it on your calculator. I do put in some time, like a day and a half, on how to graph it by hand, because it's going to really help you set up your limits. And when you're finding area, you're going to be integrating, and the limits are really important. It'll be from what angle to what angle on the polar grid. You know how you're used to integrating from, like, negative 1 to 5 along the x-axis, right? Because x is your independent variable. In polar, you're going to have to integrate with respect to theta. So you're going to have to enter your limits of integration are going to be the angles that you're integrating from. And if you don't have a good concept of how to graph, your limits are going to be off. And if your limits are going to be off, all your calculus will be off. <laughs> so although you don't have to graph, if you don't understand where the graphs and how they're made, your limits are going to be a mess. So you, we are going to use your calculator today to just see some, so to look at the parent function. So go ahead and take that out. And then we're also going to um, do some by hand. And that can be tricky for some people. It might frust be frustrating for you, which is okay, because like I said, you'll never be tested on how to make a graph. But just know you need to at least have a concept of the angles or your limits. Again, I told you are going to be messed up. So in your notes, before we go to that, I did skip a little bit yesterday that I'm going to cover just a titch of the pre-calc with you. So yesterday we did getting the points from rectangular points to polar points. And today we're going to be graphing those polar points to make specific uh, shapes on our polar grid. But now what we're going to do also, you can take a function of x, like what you've always done. Actually, until you got to this course, your calculator is just always in y equals f of x mode. But we're going to take and go make it r as a function of theta. And so that we can actually go to polar mode and get the same thing. So what I'm telling you is, because this right here is a line, right, and you know it in function mode, you can actually graph that very same line if you were in polar mode. You would just have to get rid of the x's and the y's and then make sure you solve for r. So yesterday we said that y could be replaced with r sine theta and that x could be replaced with r cosine theta. And this you would have done in the pre-calculus class this week. Again, I won't be testing you really on this. Maybe like I had one I didn't make the parameter question on the last test. So maybe one little question on a pre-calc by part, if any. I want to solve it for R, which means I need to isolate it, which means I'm going to need to get it on one side of the equation. And I'm going through this fast because it is not calculus and I'm kind of anxious about calculus. So if I want to solve this for R, I factor it out and just pull it out of both terms, right? And my x's and y's are gone, but if I wanted my calculator to be in polar mode and to still graph this same line on a polar grid, I would enter, like if you go hit your polar button, go ahead and hit it on your, or not, go to polar mode, I mean. So hit your mode, move over to polar, and then hit your y equals button. And you're going to notice it says r equals, correct? So go do that. If you wanted it to graph this line, but in your polar mode, you would enter 1 divided by the sine of theta minus 2 cosine theta. And when you hit graph, it'll make that line. I don't know if you'll need to mess with your um, window, but you should see a line just sitting there, correct? Yes, you're not 
happen, then it, it's the, it would be a line that has a slope of 2 and going uphill. So it is possible to go from one to the other. Does that make sense? So also, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to discuss a whole lot of this. You would really never want to take and turn this into this because O is really only better when there's curvature. So I wouldn't take this and write it into a loop either. I could though. This is a horizontal line, right? If I wanted this horizontal line to be graphed in polar, I would just replace the y with what we said it is it was yesterday. And I just do four divided by sine of theta. And my calculator will make a horizontal line of two four um, in polar mode. We're good? We won't have to do much of that. What did I tell you this was yesterday? R squared, correct? Didn't I tell you that's what this was going to be R squared? Right? This is really just R squared. So this is really just R equals plus or minus 4. Now that's the one where you would want to be in polar. Because you can't even graph that one in function mode. You could graph it as two semicircles, but it's really not graphing a circle. So that one, if you're in polar mode and enter R equals 4, it will draw you a circle in polar mode. Make sense? And you can go the other way too, but if we, I don't think we're going to create a need to do that, and the graphing could take a while. So what I want you to do is let's flip to this page. We're going to play on the calculators for a little bit to find some patterns. And so I am going to start off on my TI-84, but then I actually like Desmos better for these. I can't let you use Desmos, though, because you can't use it on the AP test, but Desmos is actually way nicer for graphing polar. But go ahead, and we are going to take, and you'll notice that these are kind of all the same. There's nothing in here. The argument on all of these is just theta, and it's just some multiple. There's nothing being added or subtracted. When that happens, you'll always get the same type of graph. It's kind of like what it's kind of like y equals mx plus b, correct? The m's and the b's change stuff, but it's always a line. So these numbers do change things, but these are always the same shape. So we're going to go to our graphing calculators. And again, make sure you're in, I think I have mine here somewhere. Oh, it's back behind here. So go ahead and be in polar mode, and we'll talk about a couple things about polar mode. So that first one was just a plain old cosine theta. So go ahead and hit cosine theta, but don't hit graph yet. So go um, cosine theta. That's all it says. R equals cosine theta. Nothing in front of it, nothing inside of it. It's just a plain old cosine theta. Before you hit graph, go ahead and hit your window just so you get familiar. Theta min is the lowest your angle can be. Theta max is the highest. We usually set that to 2 pi. We do a full round. All right, so I'm going to actually set that to 2 pi, but then I'll talk about how for, oops, what? I still want that one to be zero, sorry. I'm going to go zero, and then I'm going to go to two pi. I said usually we go from zero to two pi. The theta step is just like the T step. It's just how fast you want your calculator to move through those 360 degrees, or those two pi radians. So again, if you go really fast, you're going to have, it's going to make like rigid figures. So I'm going to set mine to be 0.01 maybe or 001, just like we did with the T-step. So it basically means it's going to go by 1 one hundredth of a radian. If you make it go by like a full radian, it's going to go jiggity-jaggity instead of smooth. Next up, you should either, for polar, it's super easy to think of your X-min and your X-max and your Y-min and your Y-max simply because they are um, triggy. So what's the most cosine can ever be? One. What's the least it can ever be? Negative one. And if there was a three in front of it, the most it could be is three, and the least it could be is negative three. So it's really easy to think of those constraints. I'm actually going to set mine to negative four to four so I can do all of them because some of them have twos and threes and fours in front. I'm going to do the same here. Negative four, two, 
four. I'm going to go hit graph and you'll see it made what looks like a circle. It, it actually looks like an ellipse, but it's a circle. If you remember, if it bugs you, if you hit zoom square, what is that number five, I think, it'll square that up for you. Do you see how it made a circle? We'll talk about why it put itself over there and why it started and went around this way. But for now, all we're going to do is you guys are going to tell me what's the next one on your worksheet. 2 cosine theta. Well, it should make sense what's going to happen with that, right? Instead of starting out at uh, 1, it's going to go way out to 2. So what I'm going to do is second insert a 2 right here, and I'm going to go hit graph. Do you see how it's the same thing? It just got bigger, went out to 2 on my polar axis. By the way, this is not an x of 2, so you got to be careful. It's an r of 2. So little, little, it's hard to get used to the x, y, and the r theta stuff. What's the next one? Three. So you can probably guess. We're going to graph one of these on your polar grid so you can see why it's making that. All right, go ahead and tell me the next one on your sheet. Did it go to sine or did it keep going with cosine? Okay, so the negative three does things that negatives do in function mode. They usually flip things, correct? When you put negatives in front of an absolute value, it flips the graph over. So this one is going to just have a little different uh, orientation. Let me do cosine theta still. And again, we're just graphing these on our calculator so you can see. Do you see how it flipped it to the other side? Right? So those are all your cosine ones. On the bottom of your worksheet, the most important thing is what do you notice about these graphs? Okay, put a bullet right here, and I'm going to keep sitting at my computer, but put a little bullet down here, but don't put anything after it, because we'll, we'll fill that in later. But this had symmetry, correct? The, and so, right, the cosine ones have x-axis symmetry. The x-axis is splitting the cosine ones in half. That's, symmetry is going to be huge for when you integrate, because you're going to be, able, like, if you have eight petals on a flower, if you can do one, just multiply by eight. If you can do a half a one and it's symmetrical, then just get the area of half a one and double it. So you're going to be doing a lot with your symmetry. When you do the sine ones, it's probably not going to surprise you. You probably don't know why mathematically, but it's probably not going to surprise you that the sine ones are going to have what kind of symmetry? Y-axis symmetry. So when I just do plain old sine theta right here and I go hit graph, there it is with the y-axis splitting it in half. It shouldn't surprise you that when you start putting numbers in front of here, it's just going to go out farther. The max sine can be as one. That's why that went out to the first radial unit. But if I put a two in front of here, well, then it's going to stretch on up to the second one. And again, you're supposed to be picturing circles on this graph paper. So this isn't a y of 2. It's a what of 2. You might be saying it is a y of 2, 0. Not really. Not in polar. Por that's an r of 2. Yeah, exactly. And it's a theta of pi halves. So just so you kind of know that. So then also it shouldn't surprise you what's going to happen when I insert a negative in front of there. What do you think it's going to do to it? Yeah, flip it down. So, But all of these, so back to your notes. If you want to sketch them out on here, you can, but that's that's time-consuming, and knowing how to graph them by hand is where we're going to go first. So the second, first bullet leave unmarked. The second bullet I want you to put, cosine has x-axis symmetry. Sine has what? Y-axis symmetry. For the first bullet, what I want you to do now is go hit your window button. Whoops. Graph, window, go change this uh, theta max to pi. And when we graph it by hand, it's one of the few ones in these top ones that it actually does its full cycle when we just take theta from 0 to pi. So when I hit graph on here, why isn't it? Why? Oh, I didn't enter anything. Let's go uh, 3 cosine theta. You should now know it's going to make a circle x-axis symmetry out to the third radial, correct? So I'm going to go hit graph. Do you notice how me cutting that theta to pi, it still made the full circle? You see that? when we That's the one we'll do by hand, and you'll see why. Most of them, though, you need to go to 2 pi. So your first bullet, right, does a full revolution. So what first bullet, full revolution from 0 to pi. Second bullet, cosine has x-axis symmetry. Third bullet, sine has y-axis symmetry. 
okay? When we graph it by hand, you'll see why that one, you only have to go from zero to pi, and the others, if we do that, it's only going to make half of what it's supposed to make. All right, now next up, let's go take a look at what happens. So let's go back to this graph here. I guess I'll just stay on the calculator. It's going to go to decimals, but it doesn't matter. Go hit your window now. If I went from zero to pi, and I cut that in fourth. So if I did a theta step of uh, pi four, so I'm going to go second pi over four. I, oopsie, pi divided by four. I want you to think about, don't hit graph yet. You're telling your calculator to go from zero to pi fourths, pi fourths to a half, uh, pi halves to three pi fourths, and then to pi. It's going to only do four movements. Do you, do you know what it's going to make when I hit graph? A what? A rhombus. Yeah, so you can graph geometric shapes on your calculator. You just can't be in function mode. So when I go hit graph, there's my rhombus sitting there. All right, kind of cool, right? But it's because of my theta step. I had it jump so fast. I had it head all the way across. We're going to go get rid of that later. Actually, let's go to the next ones. So now watch down here what's happening. So we're going to go graph these. These are a type of graph. They all are called, if you go to this next page over here, these are all going to be called limasomes. Okay? There are four types. You do not need to know their names. Okay? But we are going to make what's called a limason with an inner loop. Those are very common for us because you're going to be finding the areas of pieces. We're going to make these cardioids are probably the most ones that we need to understand. The cardioids are in most of the problems. Sometimes we get the dimpled one. It kind of caves in and makes a little dimple here. This one kind of flattens out. So when I like make it bigger, you'll see it kind of flattens on one side. It's kind of, I, we call it the flattened baby head. Like when babies lay in their crib, the back of their head flattens and then they have to wear a helmet. Did you know that? right? That's kind of what happens with this. It's circular and then it flattens and then it goes circular. This one we don't have as much either. It's the inner loop and why it gets made that's important. So the kind of the difference between these first two and mathematically why, which is easy to understand once we graph by hand. But on the calculators, let's go back and again, I'm just sitting up here because we're just trying to fig see what these guys make. So the first ones with nothing in here and the argument and nothing being added or subtracted, just circles. These guys, I'm adding stuff to it. Do you see what I've got going here? When these numbers are tied, watch what we get. So we're going to do the top one and the bottom one first. Let's do it on the same grid. So over here, I'm going to go back to my y equals, and we're just playing on our calculator. 2 plus 2 cosine theta was that top one. They make very similar graphs. The only thing difference between going from sine and cosine is the symmetry is going to be different. So 2 plus 2 cosine theta makes the same shape as 2 plus 2 sine of theta. When I hit graph, it's goofy. Tell me why. Tell me the t I knew it was going to do that. Number one, I didn't change my what back to normal. Theta step is what's causing it to be rigid, okay? And also, I only went from zero to what? Pi. And I told you, you had those things mess up with your graphs. So if ever your graph is rigid in polar, it means your theta step is off. So I like 0.01 so I can kind of watch it at a decent pace. I also like my um, theta max to not be pi. I like to do a full turn around that circle for every one of them except the first chunk. So I'm going to change this to 2 pi, and then you'll see the parent function that it's supposed to be. I'm going to hit graph. So when they're tied, do you see what they make? They're called cardioids. I call them butts. Okay? Just so when you graph them by hand, you're not doing that sharp heart thing. Okay? They don't. They go, they're rounded. Do you notice the difference between the cosine one in blue and the sine one in red? What's the only difference? Yep. This, the orientation, yeah, the symmetry is different. Why it does that is coming when we graph it by hand. So when these numbers out front are tied, it's going to make a cardioid. What's it going to make? Cardioid. What if I change these to threes or fours? What's the only thing that's going to happen? Be fatter, okay, or bigger. 
Now, when we go to these, it's going to make sense why these two make an inner loop mathematically. But what, we're going to go graph these two simultaneously as well. So go ahead and do 1 plus 2 cosine theta. Actually, we only need to do one. Again, the only thing that changes is where, which axis gives you the symmetry. So let's do 1 plus uh, 2 cosine theta. This does not make the butt graph because those aren't tied, okay? It's going to invert on itself and make a little loop in there. Here's why, though, mathematically. Are you ready? When we go graph that one by hand, because that's one of the ones we're going to do by hand, when you put in a pi for theta, are you watching, Caleb, or are you sleeping? Are you dreaming about pretty girls? Okay. So when I put in a pi for theta, what does 2 cosine theta become? When I put in a pi, what do I get for this? Nope. Negative 1. It'd be 1 minus 2, correct? Which means when I'm facing out, watch, we might go back to the graph. And this is, I know it's hard when we're not writing anything, but it means when I'm at pi, correct, which is facing this way, correct, I'm supposed to go back 1. So that's why it inverts on itself. Because when cosine goes negative, you, it, it, you, it actually, it wasn't at pi comma 1. That'd be here. Pi negative 1 goes over here. So when we go graph it by hand, when we plug in pi and get a negative 1, we have to go against that radial line. So that's why it inverts. What if I wanted the inner loop to go in farther? You should be able to start. What do you think I'm going to do if I want that inner loop to go one more unit in? Change this to a what? 3. Yep, and then I'd have to head back 2 so it's going to invert on itself to the second radial. Uh -huh. See what I mean? So that's why it's making the inner loop. If you understand mathematically why, then when you see this graph, you immediately know this has an inner loop, and you're going to know what calculus is important for the inner loop. Does that make sense? So same down here. It's going to make an inner loop because this is going to get pulled negative at some point. So this one will also just have different symmetry. This is the flattened baby head. It never goes negative, okay? But it also won't get into zero either because what's the smallest cosine can ever be? Negative one. So it can never get in and do what we call pull, get pulled into the pole. So just go graph, maybe go graph three plus cosine theta so you can see it. I'm not quite sure. Let me go see. And again, lots on the calculator today. We'll start doing a little bit by hand. Um, so let's go do... 3, let's swap that out and delete uh, that. When I hit graph um, right there, oh, it didn't, it's supposed to kind of flatten out a little more. You can kind of just mess, it still looks very circular, but it should have flattened out a little bit more than it did. All right, so next step, go to your next page. This is where they start getting funky and really hard to graph by hand. That's okay. Because I said, will you ever have to graph them by hand? You just have to understand certain parts of it. So go graph 3 cosine 3 theta. You guys go graph it. And go ahead. By the way, what's the most this can ever be? What's the most that can ever be? 3, correct? So I would, again, since this guy has a... Yeah, I, I think you're set because we set us, ourselves to go out to four, so we should be good. What did this make? A flower. They're called rose curves. A butterfly. What? <laughs> <laughs> Mine made a bumblebee. No, <laughs> they should all make flowers. How many petals are you seeing, though? And when you see it, is the x-axis splitting one of the petals? Okay, go do this one and go do two cosine. And again, I'm not going to go. Let, I want you guys just to investigate on your calculators a bit. Go graph two cosine five theta. There's a couple things you should notice. Your petals are now shorter, but there's more of them. Correct? Do you agree with me? How many? Five. Is the x-axis splitting one of them? Okay. 
So there's a couple things you're noticing about these numbers. The number out front is going to increase the length of the pedal. Wouldn't you agree with me? So the number out front is just going to pull those pedals out farther and farther and farther and make them longer. What's the number inside of it doing? The number of pedals. And all of these arguments are odd. Agreed? So more importantly isn't to go graph all these flowers. They're actually really hard to kind of get to look nice on paper. But what are you noticing? Number one, number out front, length of pedal. Number inside, if odd, right? These are all odd, that's the number of petals. Nine theta, nine petals. 11 theta, 11 petals. Six out front means it goes out to six, and that's the longest the petal can ever be. Are you good with that? Also, all of the cosine ones had the x-axis splitting one of the petals. All of the sine ones, guess what they have? A y-axis splitting a petal. All right, go take a look at this one now. You might say they're the same. They're not, because what are all these numbers inside of here? Now go see what happens when you have an even. All right, the other things don't change. Three means out to three, your petal's length is going to be three radial units. This will have shorter petals. These petals will be twice as long as these. But look at when you do four, co go do four cosine six theta. <laughs> Not a butterfly, still a rose curve. How many petals? When you do cosine six theta, how many petals are you seeing? You should see 12 of them, right? So I'm going to go graph. Number. Now, again, it's not about being able to graph these super accurately. It's about knowing what they will make. So maybe next week when we get this function and we have to do calculus with it, Andy will look at this and go, oh, this is going to make a flower with eight petals. Knowing that's going to be what's important. Okay. What's the length of the petal? What's the farthest out it's going to be? Two. Would that? Now think about that. That's the radius, correct? That's when dr d theta is at a maximum. Think about that, because calculus is coming in here. So here they all are on this page right here. We didn't do what's called the lemniscate. The lemniscates are actually rose curves with imaginary petals. So your calculator will, like for example, do you see how this says r squared equals a squared sine two theta, right? To solve it for r, what would you have to do? Take a what? A root. When you root, you're going to get plus or minus a, the square root of sine 2 theta, which means every time the angle is negative, you're going to have an imaginary petal on your flower, and it won't make it. So that's why you might say, well, this is supposed to make four petals, LaRude. It's just going to be like... It it might just, if A was 9, it's going to be R equals 3 square root sine 2 theta, but the root causes imaginary petals. Isn't that kind of weird? So your calculator sketches, it'll go like this, and then it'll go down here, but that's when the root goes negative, and then a little sketch, and then it goes, so you, you'll see your calculator pause, and that's not today. That, the lemniscate, so it's weird. Your calculator's doing it, it's just not graphing anything because they're imaginary numbers. How weird is that, right? <laughs> Do you get why this one would have some imaginary stuff in it? Right? Because we're rooting and do angles go negative? Angles do. Right? But roots can't be. So that's why we get the imaginary stuff. So what I want you to do next, we're going to practice graphing some by hand. Okay? So you have polar graph paper. Take that out. I'm going to pick a couple today and a couple tomorrow. Don't worry about homework. What's the assignment? That's next is it due till Tuesday. If you can finish it by the end of the hour tomorrow, I might give you some extra. So like if you uh, take it upon yourself to get ahead, maybe I don't care. I don't really need this stuff taken care of till when? Tuesday. All right, so don't worry that the notes are so long. We're going to go up here and graph R equals, and we're going to do 4 cosine theta. Now based on what I told you, you should know what that, now again, we've only just been working with polar for a while. But you should look at that and go, this isn't a flower. Because what's in here tells you how many petals there are and there's nothing in there, correct? This is just going to make a what? Circle. Knowing that's helpful. With what symmetry? 
X or Y? Yeah. Watch when we plot it. So on the bottom is where you should write that in the little box. And then I'm going to an R3 to the table. So I'm going to show you what your calculator does and why it starts where it does. Again, your independent variable is theta, which is kind of weird. You, you put numbers in on the right-hand side of the chart, and they determine the left. So that's what makes polar a little funky. But we're just going to start right here at 0, and that would be an R4, which means when I'm pointing along the 0 degree or uh, 0 radian radial, I go out to 4, which is why your calculator, 1, 2, 3, 4, starts right here. If you were to enter it, it doesn't go like this or like this. Your calculator starts it right there. And then your thing is a little bit different. Do you go up next or down next? And those are things that are important. The fact that your graphs are great aren't. And again, I always say be nice to yourself. But if you are graphing by hand, y equals a half x plus 3, don't you see things that are integral to the half x? Right? So because I'm, I didn't see a cosine theta, I'm not going to choose pi over 2, because that's like 3 over 2, and I cut it in half. I don't have a good concept of that. But pi thirds would be pretty nice, because what's cosine of pi thirds? A half, and that would be 2. So I would know that on this pi thirds radial, and that also helps if you could have any arrows so you know when to go backwards. We always head um, to the pi thirds, and we're going to go in that direction. So really what it means is, it's going to create a step like that. So when it graphs it, it pulls it up. Now watch, the next nice one is pi over 2. And what's cosine pi over 2? 0. So at pi over 2, it gets what I'm introducing a lot this chapter, sucked into the pole, because that's actually important to your graph. So when you get it sucked into the pole, this is also called a polar 0. What's it called? They're important for the calculus center. I'm going to say, OK, guys, go calculate the polar 0. Don't worry about that now. And then you know it's going to go like that. So that's our first one. Had it been sine, you actually know what it's going to make. Okay? It would have y-axis symmetry. It would go up to 4. It would start at the pole. Tell me why if I said 4 sine theta, it wouldn't start out here like this one did on the fourth radius. It would start right here. What's sine of 0? Zero? 0. Yeah, so it, it actually ends up looking around like that for the sine wave. That's where we draw that. And that's the one that simply dips below the left as well. But anyway, that's our first one. Do you see why that it gets, watch, if you put in a pi for that one, what do you get when you put in a pi? What's cosine pi? Negative what? What's cosine of pi? Yes. So when I'm facing this way, I get negative 4. That's our big one full circle for this pi. If you enter 2 pi on your calculator, it just does it twice. You don't, you don't see it. You don't know. All right, that's our first one. The next time we have are the butt graphs. So I want to see if you can kind of tell me what I'm going to define mine as so that it does make a buck. Okay, there are two things about it. There was still, and I'm going to stick with the cosine one thing for now. I still don't put in 3 in there. That's up here. It's the petals. The scale and number of them with the theta. Three of them, three petals. A four theta, eight petals. Yes. Two plus two cosine theta, three plus three cosine theta, four plus four sine theta are going to make a nice rounded cardioid, which is also called a nice star. Okay? But there are four things that are, there are some points. You're going to be able to graph these really, really fast by the end of next week. Um, just like by the end of graph, like right now, if I said graph y equals a half x plus 3 to 43, up one over to graph x, correct? You'll be doing similar shorter or integral points later, so that you can just get a really accurate graph. But for now, we are plotting points of things that are nice to take the cosine of 0, correct? Cosine 0 is 1, that'd be 3 plus 3 is 6, which means when I head in this direction, I go 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six. This is where it gets started, which is important because if I'm integrating, right? So think about that. If I'm going to be finding the area of the cardioid, it'd be nice to know where it started and got halfway, so that I could just do what? Double it. So that's why we do it. We're putting time in on the graph, and it'll really help you set up those integrals faster. I could skip the graphing, and you would be okay. But 
you would have issues setting up your emails. All right. So what's the next nice thing that's nice to take the course on? Now we said five thirds would be a half, correct? So I have four point five. What does that mean? It means walk out one, two, three, four and a half and put a dot. It means it's gonna swing up like that. And just knowing it's a cardioid that gave the gave you the equation, you, you should know it's gonna do that. Because you know it's gonna make a nice butt with x axis symmetry. Nice and round. Alright, what's another nice thing to take the cosine on? Pi over 2 would be great because it's what? 0, so that'd be 3. So pi over 2, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to go like this. And I'm doing one poem, but just so you can understand what your calculator is doing. It's starting over here, and it's putting in stuff for theta, and it's swinging around. The next nice thing would be not pi thirds, but this guy. What's this guy? 2 pi thirds, right? 1, 2, 3 pi thirds. What's its cosine? Negative a half, right? So I would do um, negative a half right here, which is going to suck it in towards the pole, which would be 3 plus negative. It would be at 1.5. So on this one, I go 1 and a half. That's why it starts to curve in like this. Guess what happens at pi? It goes to zero. So that would be called a polar zero. Because at pi, that would be negative one. It'd be three minus three. It gets sucked into the pole. Does that make sense? And if I'm doing the calculus, that's probably all I need. Because if I wanted the area of the whole thing, couldn't I integrate from zero to pi and double that? Right? So that's helpful. But let's go kind of sketch the symmetry of that. All right? Now let's talk about, are you ready? What would have happened if I wanted it to have an inner loop? And let's make it a sine one this time. So I want it to have an inner loop, no petals, but I'm still going to put, by the way, what's that going to make right now? What's that? Circle. Okay? If I told you to graph it, you should go, 0, 0, and at pi over 2, it'd be 1, and I know it has y up, it does. That is that. That's that guy. Okay? What if I put a 4 in front of it? You see? What's it going to do? Same thing. Boom. All right. To make it have an inner loop, what did I say you're going to do? All right. Maybe 1 plus. Correct? Why is that going to come? Oh, that inner loop made go beyond what I want. Uh, I'm going to do three plus. Just in case. But I think the inner loop might be too big. <laughs> All right. So watch when I go graph this. Here we go. I'm going to be nice to myself. I always like the theta of zero. Sine of zero is zero. This starts at three. Okay. So it starts at one, two, three. All right. Next, what's nice to take the sign of? Pi six. Okay. I would choose that because it's a half. A half of four is two. At pi six, where will I be? Pi six. And a half, I'd be at five. So on the pi six, one, two, three, four, five. What's another nice thing? to take pi halves. Sine of pi halves is what? Okay. So I'd be up at 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right here in between. So this is going to start here. It's going to come up and around, correct? So just so you kind of know what it's doing, it starts, it doesn't start at the pole. I'm going to take that off. What's the next nice thing to take the sine of? Pi, 5 pi 6, probably, correct? So when I go on a 5 pi 6 trio, what is the sign of 5 pi 6? Nope, still positive, correct? Because it's up. So still positive a half, so I'll be out on the fifth one in that direction. It won't go negative. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to come up and around. What's my next nice one? Pi. 
When I put in a 5, sine of 5 is 0. Will I be at 3? 1, 2, 3. You might say it inverts on itself. It will. Right? Just not yet. Okay. So here it is. What's the next nice thing? 7, 5, 6. Then it goes to what? Negative a half. The hypothesis we're doing is nice and slow. 7, 5, 6. This would become a negative a half. So where am I going to go? 1. Correct? So now it's going to be sucked in here. How about pi? And, oh, sorry. It's not, not pi. 3 pi over 2. Okay? Let's go do that. 3 pi over 2. What's its sign? Negative 1. Correct? And so 3 plus negative 4. I'm going to have a negative 1. It means when I am facing this way, I have to go backwards. So if you were to graph it on your calculator with a really slow theta step, you would see this. What's it going to make in here? It's going to be that. Does that make sense? Now here's the important part. You might be asked next week, does the middle root define the area of this inner loop? You have to know when it's actually rooted. Does that make sense? So you're going to have to figure out what these angle measures here were, where it went to the pole, and then in, at what this was. You're going to have to figure out when did it go to the pole, and when did it invert on itself. What are we going to have to invert in there? Not yet. Are you good with that? I'm going to quit with that for now. We're going to go in here. Okay? We're not doing any calculus with it. Go to worksheet 6, 7. You're going to do it on a separate sheet of paper, but we're going to go fill off one of the easy ones. So there's a worksheet in here called 6 slash 7. Here's the calculus of it. we got to somehow get to this. <laughs> we're going slow. But then I do it. I'm going to go in the back. Alright, so go to worksheet 6-7. On the top of it, write Deuce Tuesday. I might give you a little extra if I get it before then. Alright? 1 and 2 are from yesterday. You're going to skip number 4. Actually, we can skip 3 and 4. I don't, I don't really care if you can go between the two forms. Uh, with an equation, because that's pretty tough. Really. So you can leave it or you can take it easy. As I say, the only other place you might see that is on your Owen. Oh, you might. <laughs> Alright, you might need to go, there's always one question on the ACT is on Owen. Oh, can you, can you do that? It's a little weird. You're like, what's this? And you don't know how to answer. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we are going to go to this guy, and we're going to play the matching game. Oh, so yes. Okay, so your assignment is going to be uh, 1 through 9, skipping 3 and 4, okay? So just go ahead and write matching game on, on a blank sheet of paper. Or maybe just on, I don't know. We, we're going to do this on a blank sheet of paper. All right. So let's see if we can figure these out. It's kind of like figuring out which one's the parabola, which one's the absolute value, which one makes a tangent, which one makes a circle. But these are polar. Are you ready? The easiest one on this matching is when it just says, like, number 2, r equals 3. What does that make? It makes a circle with a radius of what? 3, centered at the origin, and we're done. Where is that? G. Yes. C. Yeah, G is 9. With a, so G is actually a cosine theta. It's 3 cosine theta. Isn't that that x axis? Number 13. Number 13, there it is. Yep. <laughs> you will try to match three. Just for about three minutes. We don't have much time left. But kind of decide at least one. By the way, which one's the lambda state and the infinity symbol based on what I told you? There's one of them on there that gives you something. Think a little negative and have, have a little more clear. Number nine. See what I mean? That's kind of only thing that sort of helped yesterday. I said you can do the math all this week and you can get them. You should get most of them. I just didn't tell you the spirals. That one will be the last one. Just the theta, the G 
Expedition Circle. The day before, Beta then cut off Beta's leader in two double teams. You can see them just beating the hell out of the army of the day. I thought, well, I'll get the better sucker for now. We have in our lead team of numbers don't even count. Except one for that team that admittedly was the best team in the game. Which one is that in our lead team? Ooh, number six? Yes, it was me. I'm in our lead. I meant to stop this a moment. There's still a message. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to see a 50 minute video. 